Wooden or tiled flooring? Wooden, always. <laughs> Carpet flooring or rugs? If you have a great art collection because you want to, it's a joke and say it's kind of like getting dressed in the morning. Um, you know, you're not going to wear 13 different colors. Did it work? It worked. <laughs> How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I am good. Excited to, um, to be doing this with you guys today. Absolutely. Thank you so much for joining us. Well, thank you for the opportunity. I'm sorry I am not as technically savvy as I probably should be. So. No, you are perfect. Um, where are you today, Ashley? Or Ashley, are you in Florida? I am. I'm in Florida and I'm actually tucked at my house where the phone will not ring, I hope, and nobody is here, so nobody should need me. So <laughs> I, I snuck away from the studio for a little while. Nice. And how, how, what time is it over in Florida at the minute? Right at lunchtime, right at noon. Very good. So yeah. we're stuck in the evening here, so... Bit of a time difference. Thank you so much for joining us. No, that's good. That's good. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. Great. Um, so we'll jump right into today's theme. So it is um, designing small houses and um, multifunctional spaces. So in today's climate, more than ever, we have seen a large transition of people working from home. So to kind of make these dividers, how? let's start in the bedroom. So how would you you know, what tips would you and advice would you give for people who have to work from home from their bedroom? So it's their home office, but also they sleep there. And, you know, how would you make that transition? First thing I would say is don't do a Zoom call in your PJs. You have to actually be dressed for work every day. Um, but aesthetically, I think we have found that whether it's a little bit of like a screen, like a, a pretty cane screen or something that just gives you that visual barrier, um, you need something that breaks the space up a little bit, or at least it's, you know, a basket to put everything in so it gets it out of sight, out of mind when it is time to turn it off. Um, I think nobody likes waking up first thing in the morning going, oh, well, there's my computer. I can't wait to jump to that again today. You know, so you need that visual barrier that says this is daytime and this is nighttime. And so it's not all encompassing, but whether it's a quick little drape that separates the space or it's a screen or it's just something that gives you, um, the feeling of two different spaces. I think that's that's just the idea. Um, a box or a, um, a pretty box, clearly, or a basket or something that just can tuck everything away nicely. Or those, you know, old school roll top desks that pull down. You just mm -hmm. need to be able to separate from it so that you can actually enjoy doing it when, when the time comes later. Yeah, absolutely. And so drapes, like, are, are there certain colors maybe you should have in one, one area and, you know, to kind of make it more vibrant for when you are working, you know, compared to a lot of people like their their um, softer tones for, for nighttime. Um, yeah. Would you kind of divide up textures and tones? I think because it's all one space, you've got to keep it really unified. So mm -hmm. I think you've got to keep, you know, kind of what you have going on the bedroom side also needs to be the same thing that you're doing a lot on the office side too. It's just a different feel. Maybe it's a pretty lamp that has a different color or maybe it's that your, you know, your desktop calendar is really fun and different, but you still have to be in the same space. Mm -hmm. um, so they still, to keep it a unified feeling, you don't want to walk into your bedroom and go, man, this is, this is where you work. You know, you can yeah. tell that. So you want it to be very unified. Um, so I'm not sure I'd separate with color, but maybe with more of like a happy element and pretty lamp or um, something on your desktop. Yeah, something to make you a bit excited to yeah. go to your workspace. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and then let's say the same for the kitchen. So kitchen, the kitchen table, mainly the main feature in the kitchen could be used as a meeting room and for family dinner time. So like for that family space and then creating the difference in your meeting room, how would you kind of, you know, separate those two and make that distinct? I mean, that is, that is a day to day, right? I mean, whether it's actually I'm at my breakfast table right now, or it's that you've got children doing homework after school or, I'm spread out on the kitchen, you know, all night long working on a project, but I got to clean it up for breakfast next morning. Those kind of things I think are just really real life, even more so today than maybe they were a couple of years ago. But um, I think the same is very true. We have designed several client houses where you have maybe a long banquet in the kitchen and portion of it has the breakfast table on it, but the other portion serves as a little bit of a sofa kind of keeping room area. So it's very multifunctional in the sense that you I mean, the heart of what happens in your, your home is really often in that kitchen or in that little breakfast room area. And so making sure that you can still sit down and have a comfortable conversation and also still work, you know, if you need to, 
and also have breakfast and also spill milk and you know all of the things that happen um, it's a bit of being really intentional with colors and patterns and especially textures and cleanability but also being able to have a space for the conversation that also can turn into homework and have a space for breakfast too that really can all be done almost at the same table it's just allowing yourself to think about it in a bit of a different way okay so yeah again creating that space where you can put that away and you know then it's mm -hmm. family time then it's, it's mm -hmm. great. pull it back out a cute basket usually goes a long way in our house <laughs> you need something cute to put it in otherwise you don't really pick it up so yeah. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> um, and then also how important do you think creating a lighting um creating various light layers are within the space very um, important how you were saying, you know, having a fancy lamp maybe for your work desk and, mm -hmm. you know, obviously having more of that would be more of your task kind of lighting and then creating a more ambiance for evening mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. like, like, that would be. I think it's very important. We try really hard to mix can lighting as needed, but on a dimmer and then also a fixture that is also on a dimmer. Um, there are certain times when I do need every bit of light on so I can see what I'm drawing at the table. And then there's also some times that I want to go to dinner and it, it just needs to feel like it's dinner time and not like it's the office, you know? So um, as simple as a dimmer switch can do a lot just to change the mood in, in no time, which is doesn't cost much money at all. And don't get me wrong, a pretty chandelier will go a really long way too, or a pretty lamp. But the quick, easy um, financial fix is just a dimmer switch really um, helps to set the tone on its own. Yeah, yeah, that's very true. You can have whatever mood you want at any time of the day. You got it. You got it. You got it. Um, um, okay, so then for people who may be renting or living in smaller homes or apartments or maybe in a house share, um, often find it hard to add their own twist or their own feel to their home. Have you any tips for like the smaller home maybe? And we were saying there, um, you know, they often paint it white to kind of create a more open space. But then how do you keep that warm feeling in the home and, and I'd bring your own twist to it? Artwork goes a really long way. Artwork goes a long way. So I think when you're in a situation where you can't really paint, um, you know, you can't, you don't want to necessarily invest in drapery that goes with the house that you may not stay in or an apartment you may not stay in. A drapery is one of my favorite ways to change the ambience. But um, I would say artwork is typically, I mean, behind me, there's something very overscaled, um, in a space and that can completely change the tune of those, those cold white walls easily. Between that and I'd say drapery panels, those are your two biggest um, visual things that you can take with you. It's not a paint choice, it's something that actually can leave with you when you, you go on to the next best place. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Art, or art, art is always just such an amazing thing, isn't it? It's always like a focal point when you walk into a home. And, it's, and it can interpret itself. I mean, it depends on how you arrange it, how the colors play off of each other, and um, whether it's a series of prints that, um, that work together really well, they create texture and tone and proportion and scale. All of those things can be done easily with just playing with how you arrange it. So um, I think you're, the sky's kind of the limit there. Yeah, and playing with texture and tones and colors, what, what kind of advice would you have or what tips would you have for a smaller home um, in kind of creating um, a warm and welcoming feel? They have to, they need to play together. Mm -hmm. um, so the smaller home, it's a little bit difficult if you have a great art collection because you want to, it's a joke and say it's kind of like getting dressed in the morning. Um, you know, you're not gonna wear 13 different colors and think that you're gonna present yourself well, unless you're crazy talented and you're really great. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, you, you find a focal piece, whether it's a great necklace you're gonna wear that day, or it's a great belt, or it's this fabulous shirt, you're gonna put on something that is of a little bit lesser importance to make that run really cool thing shine. That doesn't mean you're not going to get dressed. You're going to put other clothes on too, but that one thing is actually, is this, is the statement piece. So I think as you're arranging artwork or honestly in really kind of any facet of the home, you can, we try to pick kind of what your inspiration fabric is or what's the one thing we want to build this space around that we're really all excited about. Um, and then everything else is there to complement that. So same goes with artwork. You know, maybe it's this one great painting that was your great grandmother's that you really want to show off, whatever it may be. Then, and it's got great color. Well, then maybe the pieces around it are more of a charcoal and white tone, or it's more of a print that lets that one piece still really do what it's there for. You're just accenting it. So it just depends on the person and what, what their, you know, what their wants are, their needs are. But you can mix a lot of different things and have them look really well together 
you just need to know what you're going for first. <laughs> Figure out what the goal is first. Yeah. In build around it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. And um, and then what are your views on wallpaper? So it can be extremely decorative, but in maybe a smaller home, it could, might take over. And um, what like, are your views on that? Honestly, I feel like it helps make the space feel bigger most of the time. It okay. diverts your eye from um, from the fact that it's kind of small, uh, mm -hmm. a smaller room. Um, like laundry room, laundry rooms are great. Um, larger closet, I shouldn't say larger closets, but but closets are a fun place to put it as well. Um, We've recently done a, a condo that was like 1,600 square feet, and we used the same pattern throughout almost the whole entire house of the living spaces. And I swear, you walk in, it looks like it's three times the size that it was because your your eye moves. You know, it, it continues to give you some motion and some patterns. So I think they can be really intentional. I would say we try to really shy away from the accent walls because it looks like, why didn't you keep on going? Like, why did we stop here kind of thing? Um, and then it also is a bit uh, distracting in that, you know, one side of the room tends to look larger, where the other side kind of does not. So it just doesn't connect the dots very well. Um, but I would say wall covering is a wonderful tool. Um, there is an expense with it, of course. It's much more expensive than paint. But it does a lot for the space. So uh, no questions asked. It's one of our most favorite things to use um, when we have the ability to. Yeah, amazing. And then, so as as you're saying, it's it's important, and you would definitely use that. And as important as it is to know what is good to use, what are some patterns and you know paint colors that should be avoided to make kind of make you know, it? It's it's kind of personality driven, I would say. Um, mm -hmm. Me personally, I because I think I'm saturated in this industry so much, I get tired of things a little quickly. I shouldn't say that out loud, but I do. Um, <laughs> So I, and I want to be able to change it, you know, so today my favorite color may be blue, but tomorrow I might be leaning in more towards like the coral side. So I personally tend to stay patterned, but a little bit more neutral so that I'm not backing myself into a corner. And, you know, I love the patterns that have a lot of color and a lot of pattern, but um, for me personally, I would kind of be into that for six months and then go, oh my gosh, I got to change this. What's next kind of thing. So I would say, keep it, if you want to have a bit more timeless look, Keep it relatively neutral. I think blues and greens also fall into that neutral category. Um, so I'd say keep it relatively neutral um, and a pattern that you're that's not overly trendy. Um, something that is maybe of nature or a more simple stripe or a check or something that can really last kind of the test of time. So that because it, it is a big investment, um, not huge, but it's a big investment with a really big impact. But keep it kind of neutral or at least something you like and a pattern scale that is not going to go out of style, you know, in six months. Yeah. And then, so let's say for materials on your furniture and everything, would your advice be to keep those neutral? Or like if you wanted to add a bit of color, would you keep those neutral and maybe add color with the cushions and the throws? Or would you add color with the furniture? If you're like me and change your mind often, then yes, that's what I would say. Um, I, I love blues and greens, so I'm never opposed to upholstering a sofa or something. In, and I also am a bit of an addict for stripes. I love stripes. So um, I would never be opposed to pulling a blue or a green or a stripe into a piece of, piece of upholstery, but um, it would take a lot for me to go to a really bold, like, red pattern, uh, just because red's not typically my jam. It's not my color. So um, so I would say yes, if you're, if you're going to change your mind or if you know you may be moving in the next couple of months and you've got to pick up this furniture and pop it into the new house and know that it's going to work, neutral is always a given. You can put a neutral chair in any room of the house. Um, yeah. And then your investment is in your pillows and your throws. It's a much smaller investment that you know will, will really, um, you know, you can recover if you need to do something different. It's not, it's a $200 pillow, not a $4,000 sofa. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Also true. <laughs> and so then let's move on to storage in smaller homes. So mainly like walk-in wardrobes and uh, hallway cubbies like nooks have just become so popular. And um, what are, is your advice on those? Should those fit the theme or should they be like a little standout feature at home or keep it all? I think it depends on, yeah, I think it depends on where they're located and how much of a focal point they need to have. Um, you don't want to walk in your back door and have a really beautiful chest there and also have this great um, kind of cubby area and the cubby area um, takes more of the visual precedent than the beautiful chest does. So you don't want to paint this out, you know, like a, a yellow when um, when this is a really beautiful piece of furniture kind of thing. So um, I think they have their spot. 
they are certainly needed in our house with three children. It is, um, it is a necessity in a lot of ways. If I could just get them to put their things in it, it'd be even better. But um, <laughs> that they, they do need to function. Baskets, again, are our friend always because it hides all the balls, all the dirty socks that are left in shoes, you know, all of the things. Um, yeah. So I'd say baskets for sure. Uh, and then the color and the finish of them really are based, in my opinion, more on the area that, that this little cubby area is going to live in. If it does, it need to be a focal point. And if it does, then yeah, let's paint out a fun color. And maybe paint the trim in the room the same color too, and it kind of just really embrace it. Or if it's a pass by piece, then let it simply be that, and let it be for storage. Drop your stuff, but like a focal point being on another piece that you're going to be, you know, looking at when you walk in the door, kind of thing. Yes, and um, they can often get, as you're saying, with you know, three kids. If you could get your things, get them to put their things away, it can often become cluttered, and you know often used for rubbish more so than, you know, as a decorative. Okay. What would your advice be there, like to nearly hide the clutter or to make it kind of more aesthetically pleasing? Punish your children when they don't pick up after themselves. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, baskets. I mean, I really think baskets. Baskets are house are key. Um, drawers in the bottom of them, sometimes if it's going to be a custom-built piece, the drawers are often very helpful. Mm -hmm. um, the hooks are good. Sometimes doors are good. My family doesn't seem to be able to open a door and put them in inside of it. Um, but if you can get your people to do that, then that'd be great. Um, but I would say, you know, it, it ends up being, it's a closet of sorts. You know, it's a closet, at least our house, for the baseball bag and for all of the cleats that still have dirt on them when they get put into the drawers. And it's a place where every baseball cap is hung and every coat that we've outgrown is still hanging in there. You know, it's so it's a bit of a, of a storage spot. And unless you're... Um, overly tidy, um, sometimes you need the ability just to hide. So I would say baskets, doors, drawers, um, <laughs> or just mess at your children and make them pick up after themselves. <laughs> and so yeah, like speaking of those baskets and you know, sometimes you need things, places to hide. Let's say in a, in a smaller bedroom, um, do you find that an, an open wardrobe, like, you know, having rails and shelves um, works better than maybe having a closed wardrobe, a closed space to, to again, give the illusion of a bigger room? Or what do you find there? Bedroom-wise, I would say, because there's so much else going on typically in the space, the more closed off it can be, the better. Um, okay. Even if it's a drape that you just pull in front of it. Um, I think even if you are overly tidy, um, it's still a lot to see. It's a lot of texture, a lot of pattern. There's a lot of things to be seen there. And that's probably not what you want the focal point to be when you walk into the room. So yeah. I would say bedroom purposes, I'd say hide it. And then you can still be messy if you want to be. So yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, I just think we have a question in from Alana. Do you think paneled walls can close a smaller room too much? No, I don't. No. Yeah. It, could be, I mean, it depends on color. It depends on the color and how you treat it. But the paneling is just another form of texture. So it's really, it really just depends on, um, on the color probably more than anything. Okay. And do you, are you a fan of paneled walls? I am. That... I've got some behind me. So yeah, um, yeah. I think I think they can be right in a certain manner. Um, I think the the shiplap look, which is so prevalent at least in this area right now, um, is a bit it's a bit on its way out the door. Um, I mm -hmm. think it's run its course. Um, so I would say stick with something that's a bit more traditional and a little bit less trendy. But um, but nothing's wrong with it. It's very classic, um, just very traditional architecture style. So I would say embrace it. Go for it. Yeah, amazing. Okay, and um, then what are the your top three tips for smaller spaces to make them more homely, welcoming, and what would your top top three tips be? Maybe not in order of importance, but I would say be overly intentional. Um, so whether it's a really big piece of art, you want to know if when you're walking into a small space, you need to be able to focus your attention on what it is there that you want someone to see. So if it is a great piece of art, or if it's a really cool headboard, make it tall, make it intentional, make it have um, a good deep color, or something that just really pulls your eye back to that one spot. Um, I mean, this sounds silly, but as a female, if, you're, if you've got beautiful blue eyes, you're gonna wear some good mascara because it makes your eyes pop, you know? If you've got great lips, you're gonna wear some red lipstick because that's what you want people to see, you know? You're gonna enhance the prettier qualities. And the prettier features. So um, same goes for dressing a space. It's often not like getting yourself dressed in the morning. So be intentional with what you want them to see, um, what you would like to see, and, and play it up. Make it, make it important. Um, find your happy spot. Find the things that make you happy. I mean, if, if it's your room, it needs to look like it's your room, not like you went to 
the local furniture store and bought one of everything. It needs to be yours. So make it be a little bit eclectic, a little bit gathered. It needs to have your happy things in it. Um, and then I think rug placement is a big deal. If you have hardwood floors, I think your rug placement, um, an incorrect rug placement can make a, a room feel much smaller than it actually is. So we try very hard to make sure that your nightstands are, that the rug is at least the width of your bed in your nightstands. You wanna at least incorporate those into that. Um, it's like a picture frame on a picture. You, you know, wanna make sure you're getting the picture within the picture frame. Um, so I think rug placement is a big one too. And not having too much pattern on the floor because it will it will steal the attention of the room. Um, yeah. So you wanna draw your eye up. So drapery is a good one. Artwork is a good one. Um, pull your eye up. Small, small spaces that don't have um, any vertical components feel much smaller. So whether it's a great light fixture or it's um, drapery that really connects the dot from the floor to the ceiling, it pulls your eye all the way up. Um, but all uh, artwork too, um, oversized artwork too, especially in, again, I didn't mean to use this example behind me the whole time, but behind me is a really big piece of artwork, you know, and it does, it carries that vertical element. It really elevates your eye. So um, let's see, I've, I've said way too many things. Um, no, that's, that's your third point. That's perfect. Okay. Well, lots of ways, to, lots of ways to play with it, but I would say that the vertical element is a very important one in the space that's small. Yeah. Andre, well, thank you so much for answering the questions, but yeah. before, we have a quick fire round for you. So okay. it's the last style questions. Are you ready? I'm ready, I think. Okay, perfect. Wooden or tile flooring? Wooden, always. <laughs> Carpet flooring or rugs? Rugs. Nachos or tacos? Mmm. Tacos. Going to the movies or a home theater? Home theater. Curtains or blinds? Curtains. Marvel or Harry Potter? Maybe Harry Potter? Yeah. Uh, farmhouse design or an urban industrial? I like them both. Um, maybe, <laughs> uh, maybe farmhouse. I don't know. I like them both. <laughs> okay. Uh, mixed furniture or matching pieces? Oh, mixed. All day long. Uh, white chocolate or milk chocolate? Can I say dark chocolate? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a bathroom or a living space? Say that one more time. Would you rather design a bathroom or a living space? A living space. A living space. Great. Well, thank you all. <laughs> thank Sorry. you for joining us, Ashley. This was fun. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Lots of fun. What are you getting up to for the rest of your day? Um, carpool with three children in a little bit. Um, a site visit on a, a renovation project and then just keeping my head above water. You know, what do you do? <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a fun day. It does, it does. Thank you. No problem at all. Thanks so much again, Ashley. And so good to see you. You as well. Thanks so much. See you Bye. too. Thank Bye. You.